I thought the Powell Fed and really global central banks uh, were really aiming to get inflation down to what I called two point something. <laughs> uh, and the idea was inflation was up to five, six or seven at the peak. Uh, and the goal would be to get it in the zip code of the inflation target. But in terms of dealing with the last mile, uh, to let the economy sort of get to the last mile on its own without another leg up in rate, rate hikes. And, that, and that's what I think we're seeing in the U.S. and really mm -hmm. around the world. Is the Fed restrictive now? The polarity of market economists we speak to is there's a select group saying, you know what, they could go up further and then come down. And there are those others saying, stop it. They're way above the real rate. Bring it down now. Which is it? They, 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 they think they're restrictive. I think they're restrictive. I think there can be a debate on how restrictive. The Fed's thinking, which I think makes sense, Tom, is that the longer they keep rates here, and importantly, the longer they signal they're going to keep rates here, they will become more uh, restrictive. And so, yes, I'm certainly in the camp that they've done enough. And the real question is, how long do they have to keep rates uh, at this level? Rich, well, Tom and I will speak to people both in academia and in practice that says, the Fed should be cutting now. If you look at the real-time data, inflation is maybe not whipped, but we're pretty darn close. We should be cutting rates now. What do you, how do you think about that? If I were still in the building, I, I would not be in the camp to be cutting now. It certainly looked like that was feasible coming into the year, but you know, since the beginning of the year, the inflation numbers have been going in the wrong uh, direction. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, um, I think that, uh, especially I think what's relevant here is an element of risk management. So I think there is path dependence. The fact that the last three years, inflation has been well above target, I think it makes it a harder call to cut uh, preemptively. So I do think, you know, Sometimes central banks say they're data dependent and they're not. I do think the Powell Fed now is data dependent, and yeah. I think they're ready to cut if the inflation data starts to proceed as they expect. How do you think this Fed is looking at the labor market? I mean, I, I, Tom and I, we kind of throw out this term. It feels like we're at full employment. Everybody who wants a job kind of has a job. Yeah. Wages are going up in, in, at a pretty re reasonable pace. How do you think the Fed looks at the labor market today? I think they see a labor market that is robust uh, by a, a variety of measures, not just the unemployment rate, but, uh, but other uh, indications. And that's a good thing, indeed. I think one of the first speeches I gave as vice chairs, I made the point, you know, the Fed is not targeting wage inflation. It actually likes it when folks get a nice raise, but raises have to be consistent with the inflation target. And you know, we've gotten some good news on productivity in the last uh, year. Productivity growth is yeah. now around 2%. Uh, and 2% productivity growth with 4% wage increases, if sustained, gets them pretty close to where they want to be. So I don't think there's a lot of adjustment required in the labor market from here. One of the key issues for a lot of folks is the consumer here. I mean, you know, there's a tale of two cities, if not more, out there with the U.S. consumer. A lot of folks are really struggling, particularly if they don't own assets, whether it's real estate or, you know, stocks or bonds and things like that. And how does the Fed think about the consumer here? How do they gauge how the consumer's doing? They look at the earnings from Walmart. I mean, what do they do? Well, the, the Fed staff has a, devotes a lot of resources to the consumer, not only at the aggregate level, what is total consumption, but also increasingly during the time I was there, focusing on the, on the distribution, in, both income and consumption distribution across the population. And there are a lot of things that, that can you, you can monitor in particular how many households are laid in their car payments or credit card payments. And so certainly, certainly the Fed spends a lot of time on the bottom-up analysis of the consumer. So again, we came into the year, Richard, I mean, the market was discounting six rate cuts. Yeah. Now we're down to less than two. I mean, the market has no idea what's going on out yeah. there. Is the Fed, from your perspective, are they happy to say, hey, we've done a lot of work here. We've raised rates. We had a major impact on this economy. Let's just wait and see how our work plays out. Is that kind of where we are, do you think? I, that's exactly where they are. In fact, the, the chair got that uh, question at the press conference, and I'm paraphrasing, but his answer was along the lines of, we judge that policy is restrictive, and we judge that if we keep it here long enough, it will be sufficiently restrictive. So that's definitely their mindset. They're data dependent in terms of when the cut and how many cuts are, are, are going to happen, uh, but they certainly judge that, that policy is, is restrictive uh, here, and they just have to keep it here.